Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters, where we devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. Good morning, you guys. Good morning, indeed. We're rounding out with day five of our devotion on the Bible app titled Obedience, an old word with new meaning. There's a link to that in the description if you guys want to follow along with us. And the scripture is all up in this one, so Tori's going to take it from here. Yes, you guys. Let's do it. Today's devotional says this. Here you go. Here comes your answer. Is there something on your mind right now that you just can't find an answer to? Yes. Maybe it's the question of what direction your future should take. Maybe you have two job offers to choose from, or maybe there is nothing happening in this area at all. You are unemployed and wonder what to do next. Maybe you are questioning whether you are doing everything right in raising your children, or you ask yourself whether it makes sense at all to bring children into the world this day and age. Do you know how to be obedient to God in the midst of these important questions? In Proverbs, it says in this context, this is Proverbs 2, verses 3 through 6. Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Calling out for insight and crying aloud for understanding sounds like a lot of work at first, and it is. I know, I often wish I could just pray for it once and it would happen right away. Kind of like, here you go, here comes your answer. But God wants us to be obedient to him and strive for the answers, to keep at it even if we don't get an answer at the moment. Why? That's what the verse says, and it doesn't hurt to repeat it. And then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Wow, what an opportunity to know God even better. The one who has every answer to every problem. The one who knows everything. If you had the chance to get to know your great example here on earth, you would stay tuned, wouldn't you? Let's be obedient and learn to stick with God even if we don't get the answer right away. Yes, if you want to know God better, you have to learn that too. What question is on your mind right now? Will you stay tuned now and pray about it? Yeah, I just had this thought in my head about whenever you see like a little baby about to start walking Mm -hmm. and you see them just kind of keep at it, even though they might stumble and fall, They get up and they try to take another step. Then maybe they stumble and fall. But there's this tenacious excitement about learning how to walk. And they don't just stop and say, oh, well, I can't do this. I'm just going to give up on it in general and just stay sitting down my whole life. Mm -hmm. No, they're trying to learn how to walk. Well, newsflash, we're all trying to learn to walk with God. And so we need to be like children of God walking towards our Father. And even though in areas we may be stumbling down, We might get a little frustrated with it. We need to get back up and continue to walk towards him with him because that's the privilege of what he gave us. He gave us his Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. to to walk with God as we walk towards God and we walk for God. Man, I like that. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) It just got me all jacked up. Yeah. But I just love the idea of making sure that we don't get to this point where like, well, God's not speaking to me right now. So I'm just going to turn around and go listen to other things I shouldn't be listening to. No, let's keep that tenacious excitement yeah. and expectancy that we, we will hear from the Lord and he is walking with us, but let's just not rule ourselves out mm-hmm. or just kind of discount a situation just because we're unsure of what to do. Yeah. God will speak to us and let's be excited for him to do so. Yeah, that's so good. And what I kept hearing too is do we want the answer or do we want to know God more? Like, are mm. we desiring the answer from God more than we're actually desiring him? And I think that that question and that that longing that we feel like I hope and I pray that my longing to experience God's presence is greater than my longing for the answer to this question. And yes, he is the God that has the answer to every question, every problem. And it says, as we seek him, as we cry out, we will gain wisdom. We will gain insight. So those things will come because the Bible is true and it says so. And so if we are seeking out wisdom, 
like it is hidden treasure. It will come to us because God is faithful and God is a God that keeps his promises. He is a God that cannot lie. But inside of that, I think the deeper question is, and the reason I feel like it's so important, and I feel like the reason God may not answer us right away is because he wants to continually hear from us. If he just gave us the answer and then we just moved on, then it's almost like we don't get to experience this intimacy and this extra time with him. And so I think just realizing the beauty of an answer we have to wait on, you know, the beauty of the patience that comes from not getting the answer right away. Like God is always doing something bigger and something inside of us. And yes, he is going to reveal that answer to you at the right time time. And so we have to believe the best of God. So if you have not heard from him yet, if you have not like what the devotional was saying, like you are longing for the answer to this specific question. Let me tell you, Chad and I are in our season of so many unknowns right now. And we want some like particular answers. It'd be very Mm. nice. We'd probably feel a little more Stable. stable and a little bit more at peace. But here's the thing. God is teaching us other things right now how to have peace in him when we don't have the answers, how to walk in faith and trust inside of the unknown and how to navigate certain things as a family when we don't have certain comforts that we're used to. And so I think it's that perspective shift of saying, okay, God, you have me waiting for this answer right now, but how can I press into you and how can I be obedient and how can I align my heart with yours inside of the waiting because it's beautiful, because you have purpose for me in the here and now today. So how can I walk in obedience to you today, even if I don't get the answer that I want right away? Yeah. And it makes me think of the prodigal son Mm -hmm. where he told his father, like, I want my inheritance before you pass. Right. And his father obliged. And what he basically was saying is that I want what you have for me. I don't want you. And then he left and he squandered it and he found himself in a dark, bad place. And mm-hmm. what did he have after he lost it all? Nothing. Well, he well he had nothing, but then he ran back and what did he have? He had everything. Oh, yeah. He had the one thing that he truly needed, which is the loving embrace and acceptance of his, of his father. Mm-hmm. And so I think sometimes God can be protecting us from us. Right. Um, that's not, that's not always meant to be like an attack because I know a lot of the things that we all are praying for are like are good things. They're sweet mm-hmm. things. Um, but let's just make sure that we're reminding ourselves. It is important to remind ourselves of this, that God knows best. Mm -hmm. And I I know personally how hard that can be to embrace because sometimes I'm like, I'm like, God, this would be, this would be great if, if you healed that person, if you did that thing. Mm -hmm. And I don't know all the answers to all those things, but I do know that God does offer us a peace which supersedes our own understanding of the manufactured will that we can develop on our own. Mm -hmm. And so doing what Tori said and giving God the benefit of the doubt that he does know best and he wants what's best for us, but for his big perspective picture of, of him, of him redeeming things, right? Not about our own personal castles, but about the kingdom that he's building. There's something bigger happening here. And it's important to have that perspective shift as it'll change the way we go from saying, God, I want your stuff versus God, I want you. So good. Want to praise it out? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this devotional. We thank you for the beautiful reminders, God. But most of all, we just thank you for your presence. We thank you that we can come to you with our questions, Father, that we can cry out for wisdom and for insight and that you will reveal things to us in your best timing, Father. I pray that in these moments, we would truly believe the best of you, Father, that if you have us in a season of waiting, that we would truly rest in the fact that you know best and that you will reveal things in your perfect timing and that all we have to do is trust you and surrender our life to you today. Father, would you just show us what the next step is today for us to walk in obedience to you, Father? We want to do this with you. And so, Father, I pray that as we press in today, as we draw near to you, that you would draw near to us, that we would feel you in new ways, that you would truly give us that backstage pass, Father, so that we can see what you're doing behind the scenes, so that we can see what you're doing in our everyday mundane. Father, we know that you are always moving, always active, always 
with us, Father. You never leave us or forsake us. So can we find peace in that today? Would you cover us with your peace today? We pray these things in Jesus. Amen, God. Amen, God. Amen, y'all. When I was that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and continue pressing to the Lord. Yes, and y'all don't forget that you are God's masterpiece. And don't forget to love you. We love you guys. We'll be talking to you tomorrow. Hasta luego.